All right, welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm gonna be upgrading this 2008 Ford Crown Victoria, and I'm gonna be adding cruise control. So it came from the factory as a police interceptor model without cruise control. You can see the steering wheel. There's no way to add it. So on the 2005 and up Ford Crown Victorias, it is very easy to add cruise control if you have the knowledge and the right uh, software equipment. Uh, unlike previous years where you had to buy the cruise control module and some vehicles you had to make sure the you had to add wiring, etc. It's just as simple as replacing the steering wheel with one that has the cruise control switches and then enabling the feature in the computer. So the first thing that I had to do was get a steering wheel. And sometimes you can find these used for a good deal on eBay. Uh, Ford does still make them for the 2005 Up Crown Vic. They usually support vehicles for at least 10 years, and the last one was made in 2011, so they are still supporting it. I bought this wheel brand new right here, and they vary in price depending on if you you can upgrade to leather, and it'd be a good time to do that um, if you want a leather steering wheel. Unfortunately, the one that I wanted, this one here, was probably the most expensive one that they make. I think it's because it's a little more rare. So while most of the police interceptors had a dark charcoal interior, you can get that steering wheel relatively cheap. We're talking under $200 with cruise switches. Uh, this one right here had an MSRP is almost $500. Of course, I didn't pay that much for it, but I, it was still very expensive. And it's just a supply and demand thing, but that's not really that important. So I'm here to show you how to get the old one off, how to get the new one on, and how to turn on cruise control in the computer. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go under the hood. We need to disconnect the battery because we are going to be removing the airbag and disconnecting it. So it's important that we disconnect the vehicle's battery, let it sit for at least 15 to 20 minutes. Make sure that all the energy out of the restraint module is drained. Take our eight millimeter socket. Just loosen up the negative terminal here. All right, tuck that out of the way. Go ahead and set our hood back down. So as you can see, I've got this whole dashboard torn apart. That's because I had to send the instrument cluster out for repair. It is not necessary for you to remove the whole dash or any of the steering column parts to do this. All right, really all you need to get the wheel off is some type of Allen key that fits. If we look at the back of the wheel, you see there's one hole here, there's one on the bottom, and on the other side, same thing. You've got two holes. You want to take your key and we're gonna to wanna to move the wheel to make this easier. Up and down makes it easiest because it gives us the most room. And what we're doing is releasing, when we stick this in here, we wanna feel around. So we're gonna push it through there. And basically the airbag is clipped in to these four holes and it uh, is like a spring basically that with a little tong that goes past it and then locks in. So when we push the Allen key in, it's opening the spring inside and releasing the airbag. So we'll do half the wheel at a time trying to pop it loose. And I do need just a slightly smaller Allen key. So let me grab that. Okay. So, so I can show you what this looks like. So I've got the Allen key pushed in here. You can see now. When I depress that spring, you'll feel the Allen key hit the metal. There is a lot of room to wiggle around in there though. So you gotta have some patience to find that sweet spot. Like I said, once you find it, you're just gonna pop out one side at a time and try to make sure it doesn't fall back into place. All right, so I couldn't really film that. I needed both hands, but definitely need a lot of patience. I'm just gonna tell you that, you know, since we don't have the Ford tool, if there is one, you have to, I mean, you really have to just find that 
sweet spot. And what helped me was to, every now and then I would take this and stick it in here on the new wheel and just kind of look at the angle that I needed on each part of the wheel. And then once you get both top ones out, I took a screwdriver and kind of jammed it back behind the wheel here. That way when you pop the bottom one out, the top one doesn't snap back in and you gotta start all over. So it's a little bit of a pain, but if you take your time and you know work around the wheel, you will eventually get all of these popped out. It's not that bad. Okay, so once we have that part off, you can see what we're left with here. Got some wiring connections to undo. So these are your airbag connections. As you can see, and then you can just remove this wire from here. And we'll take this clip off of here, and now our airbag is free. You can just set that aside for a minute. So now we need to take out this large Torx bolt here. All right, so we'll take a T50 Torx bit, break this loop, break this bolt loose. Usually the steering wheels, once you get this bolt out, they will not just come right off. So I'm gonna loosen this up all the way first. We're gonna just check. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll thread this back in about halfway. Well, to make sure there's plenty of threads in there because we're gonna use it. a puller. You don't want to damage the threads. And then you want a two arm puller such as this. Go ahead and disconnect this wiring harness. We're at it. Let's get out of the way. That's the plan now. Is to pull the wheel off. So we'll take let's see, my steering wheel puller this is 11 16 I'll just kind of tighten this down a little bit. All right, that easy. So just broke it loose. Now if we take the bolt back out, the steering wheel just pops right off. It's a good time. This is your clock spring. Uh, obviously, it'd be a good time to replace it if you have any problems. Your horn doesn't work. You know, you have an airbag light, etc. This would also be the procedure to replace the clock spring. That's what this part, the little plastic part, is right here. Ours is in good shape, so no need to do that. You can really see a good view of the whole ignition assembly here. We'll go ahead and lay the new wheel in place. Run our wires through here. There's only one way that the wheel can go on. It is keyed, so you do not have to worry about putting it on wrong. Just like that. You want to make sure this is torqued, and this has to be very tight. And a good way to know if it's on all the way. Loosen it back up. What we're trying to do is compress the wheel onto the shaft, like the old one was. This one is not popping off either. And that's how we know that it's on there the way we want it to be. So we'll go ahead and tighten this back down. Extremely tight. And so once we have that tightened down, we'll go ahead and plug this harness in to a clock spring. Now we can put our 
airbag back. Make sure you get these plugged in correctly. Get everything routed correctly. This needs to be plugged onto here. Okay, do a once over, look everything over real quick. We don't want to have to take this back off. We can just set this right here. Now, if you don't want to press it in all the way, you can just set it here like this. Uh, that way, if there is an issue, you know, but to put it back on, you just firmly press down on it like that. So I think. I'm going to just leave it like this until I'm sure that everything is working properly. So the next step is to program the cruise control. All right, there's some really good write-ups on how to step through this online, but I'll just show you real quick. So once we get Load it into IDS. Here's where we'll be. We want to do module programming. Click the check mark. Yada, yada, yada. We want to go to programmable parameters and then speed items. So once we click on speed items, It'll give us the option to tick on um, speed control. It'll either say present or not present. We'll click present, we'll click accept. It will actually go through a series of screens. I'm not going to do it again. I guess I can show you though that it'll show that it's present. It'll go through a series of screens. Uh, it'll have you turn on and off the ignition. It will then erase the programming in the computer and then it will upload a whole new calibration file to the computer, the latest calibration with speed control enabled. So and that's why, unfortunately, you can't do this in Forescan because Forescan doesn't have the ability to completely rewrite a PCM uh, calibration. That's why you need a program like genuine Ford IDS. You can see it is taking a while. See, so there we go. So you can see I've already done it. So it says it's present. On your car, it would say not present normally. So now I'm going back and I'm finishing the process of installing cruise control. It'll go through a process of clearing fault codes that may have been created while going through the module programming. There is a slight delay with this setup. It is slower than if you were using an actual genuine Ford like VCM2. And you can enjoy it. It's a little bit of work. But for those DIYers like me, it's worth it. If you can find your dealer that will do it for you um, for relatively inexpensive, definitely less than an hour of labor, it could be worth it just to do that as well. If this really isn't something you feel like getting into. All right, so the last thing to do with our cruise control installation after we get it programmed with IDS is to go take it for a test drive. We'll see if it works. All right, so we're gonna be going over 30 miles an hour. All right, so we'll hit the on button, hit set. You can see the cruise light on the dash comes on. Let's see if we hit the brakes, it goes off. Hit the resume button, comes back on. So everything is working as it should. So that's all there is to it. Like I said, it's, uh, depending on your access to uh, IDS, it can be a little tricky. But I'll leave a link below to the uh, clone of the VCM programmer. So if the video was helpful, be sure to like it. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I try to answer all questions if I can. Until next time, we'll see you later.